G'day, welcome to the uh, the Monday Review. Uh, I'm Matt Taylor from The Punish Show and I'm with Aaron Macy from uh, One to Follow. How are you, Matty? I'm pretty good, mate. How are you? Yeah, rather well, after a nice little Saturday. Yeah, look, it was um, it was a huge weekend across the board for uh, Punter Show and One to Follow followers, so that was great. And um, yeah, the Punter Show on Monday is not here. Uh, we're doing that Wednesday. So we thought we'd do a uh, Monday review that we're going to sort of keep up over the next couple of months, I suppose, while the yeah, racing definitely. heats up. Yeah, it was good to see a couple of good-sized fields and a track that was somewhat dry. And we ha still can't get to a good track on a Saturday at the moment. But no, we saw one today at Campbell, the first good we've seen for a while in yes, Sydney. Yes, and I think as you had a look, uh, some of the form out of that's already been a little bit skew if So okay. that's something that we'll need to keep a close eye on moving forward. Yeah, okay. Well, uh, for those who don't know, Aaron's uh, responsible for the uh, the Sydney set that comes uh, via One to Follow. Yeah, Sydney and, um, Insider. The Sydney Insider, mate. And uh, from what I understand, you had an absolutely huge day. Yeah, it was a good day. Yeah. It was a rather good day. It, um, if Vanbrook would have just got that one better for us, it yeah, would have we'll, been a monster. Yeah, we'll, we'll go through some of the races. We'll start with Vanbrook, and um, it was sort of a, a, a bit of a play for mm. a few of the, uh, the sets we've got. And um, yeah. look at... Uh, it travelled up nicely, didn't it? it was just was it fitness late? Is that what you saw? Oh yeah, it was definitely fitness late. He was, he's definitely the nicest horse in the race. Yep. How how good he is, I I just don't know. Like I yeah. definitely thought he could be one of the horses. Looking at some of those early black type races, he still disappointed me a little bit. Yeah, yeah, I suppose. Re regardless of yeah, the fitness wasn't there, and, mm. and that's one thing. Sometimes I think I don't pay enough respect to is the fitness, especially on those wet tracks. And yeah. You just think the ability can get them home, but we will see moving forward. But after seeing him parade, mm. he did need the run. There's no doubt about that. He, he was going to improve from the run. and I, I think the horse that did win the race, being trapped very wide, but they were going slow. And they, he did find that good part of the track, and it was probably the... Yeah. They did go... I think if he crosses, they get a little bit harder, and they do actually chase mm. each other. And we might have got the different result, but... The rock hard fit horse won, he was favourite in the market. He blew late and it was as much as you see Chris gets on the show, he says we like yeah. the horse, it should win, and this, that and the other. It did blow late. Yep. People did want to oppose it and it, it was for that reason they were right mm. marginally. Yeah, I guess uh, and from the Pro Better Live stuff, Darren uh Darren did sort of put his money on uh, the, the fitness factor, so we sort of had a good result with that. But uh, obviously, <laughs> not for everyone. But that's the not beauty right. of that's the beauty of punting. We we well, both had it. good wins, but uh, there's different ways to do it, isn't there? And, and that's that's the beauty of racing. It's like I, you and I can be quite similar at times. So you can have someone like myself that can be quite different, say Darren. Yep. But we can both have good days yeah. on the same day and yep. still win and. That's the thing I really do love about racing. It's the best. Uh, the second race at Rose Hill was uh, one of the stayers races that was taken out by Sir Mako. Um, look, I don't think there's too much to say other than the horse did the job. I think one of the interesting things to come out of the race, and I think Dallas made the point, was with Raining having such a hard run to yep. start prior when he did win. and He did tend the race quite flat, and as much as there was such a strong tip around for him, Betfair had another idea, I think it started $9. Mm. So, yeah, okay. right at the death, and, and he did really did race a bit like a flat horse. So, I think, uh, look, they, these are low-grade stayers. Yep. I sometimes call them slow sprinters, but it, it was one of those lower-grade races and moving forward. Uh, I think Chris can improve these like horses from New Zealand, like Sir Mako, but I don't think yeah. there's any world beater. Yeah, exactly. Look, I think the owners have done a pretty good job sending him over to Australia. He's already earned, um, yeah, shed loads of cash. Just for like, two or three starts here, is it? So, um, yeah, the, the horse will, I'd imagine they'll just keep sending it around. It'll, it'll earn good checks and they'll be in a lot yeah, of finishes. Yeah, definitely handles those wet tracks. His run prior is held up and it was a very interesting ride. Got a senior jockey back on board and did the job. Yep. Uh, race three, um, well, another staying race, a little bit longer, a little bit slower <laughs> horses. Uh, Soviet Courage got the cash. Um, look, we had a good result. In, uh, we had a, a solid win on, on that on Pro Bit Alive. How did you play that yeah, race? I had it on top. We, yeah. In doing the speed map, you yeah, seen that was Bjorn's horse was going to go. Yeah. Bjorn's horse was going to roll forward. You had another leader. It was the horse that was just going to be, I think, what Dallas refers to as the sweet spot. Yeah. It was going to get that beautiful um, the run there. 
It's run mm. prior was good. So the, look, looks to be quite a, a versatile horse. Yeah, look, it's, um, it's taken a while to find its feet, and uh, it was just travelling on the turn, wasn't it? Like, yeah, definitely. Another low-quality race, but I wouldn't be surprised to see it win a few more races. This time of year, for sure. Um, race four was... Um, yeah, look, it was an interesting race. We had Allegria and... Um, uh, who's our other horse? We had... El, El Lou, they were sort of fighting out the finish, but they didn't quite get the cash. Yeah. How, how did you play that race? I uh, I saved on the winner. Saved well, the I, winner, yeah. Made it a made it a small result, and yeah, land and right so up on on um, Allegria. Yeah. Moving forward, they are definitely two horses I'd like to be following. Moving forward, Allegria. I, if I had control of Allegria, I'd be sending her straight out for a spell and bring her back for the Spring Carnival. Back into the Spring Carnival, I think she's a very, very talented filly. Yeah. She'll improve big time. Yeah. Okay. More dry track. She was a horse that probably should have won the race. She's got held up. Hmm. And she does have that turn of foot. She just needs to find a dry track. And look, the money came for Land Grant all during the week, and I think it even came again on race right. day. It was very heavily supported. Mm. There was a horse, yeah. And this is a, it's a funny time of year, but horses can really make that transition from like, yeah. Wednesday and Thursday races to Saturday because the, the gap in the majority of the races isn't so far as opposed to when you're getting into the car close to the carnival, your Wednesdays and Saturdays, there is that bigger gap. Yeah. Yeah, fair enough. And look, this next race, race five, was um, uh, one of the the fillies and mares races. Was a great, a great, um, some great results, obviously for yourself with the uh, with your set, the Sydney Insider yeah, set, but also hold. also with Snowbet. And uh, it was hard to hold. Who was um, second up, and it uh, won and led all the way and paid twenty two dollars. So well done. A bit of a highlight for you. Yeah, it was. It was a good day. It's always nice when you can find the twenty to one. How did you find top? it? Tell me, taught me through it because I had a quick look at the race and I sort of put my hands up. What did you, what did you, how did you find it? Well, I've been putting a fair bit of work into these fillies and mares races of late and realising and, and looking back at a lot of the results and even you see, starting to see results where you have horses that were getting beat on in Wednesday races but then can be running places in like some of these group, group mares races. Yeah, yeah. And I'm starting to see that. As much as, yes, she, did, she didn't look to have as much ability as some of the horses at the top end of the weight scale yep. on form. I, on, on their day, I don't think there's too much between a lot of them. Yeah. And she's always been a horse that I do have and had an, a good opinion of yeah. like, through the midweeks. I think she raced well last prep. She returned with an exceptional baritron. I, I saw she had a win over Anyas who ended up racing in our autumn and I always had a little rap and it, she she did pretty well and yeah so I guess that Frank the form a bit well there you had the Frank the form there but look she she's always a horse I had an opinion of mm. she'd come through she trolled exceptionally this time in mm. found the race first start drawn line at Rose Hill that was completely up the inside it was a total forgive run you just had to completely wipe the run forget it was there all it was was like another barrier trial for her okay she was always going to go forward in a race with no pace and that's why when you looked at the favourite, Fifty Shades of Grey, she was going to be last in a race with no pace yeah. and taking short odds a horse like that. It was something I was really inclined to bet against her. Yeah. I thought there's always going to be that good chance that she was going to get held up or she's going to get too far back. She's going to be flashing the line as she does. And at the same time, I don't think the Fifty Shades of Grey quite runs at 1,200 at the strongest. I think she's more yeah. of an 1,100 metre horse. Yep. So I just thought she's, she's going to be the horse to just get the beautiful run, either roll forward and lead or sit off Woody Fan who missed the kick. Yeah. So she led, dictated and got the chocolates. Yeah, good stuff. That was uh, Snowy had um, four tips today and had two winners at a 655% return. So Snowbet, um, welcome Snowbet's back. Flying. He's flying, he's going real well. Uh, once a follow.com.au to grab the Snowbet tips. Uh, the next race, well, we're at race six. What do we have here? Talk us through it. This was the houseman race. This is the the feature the, of the one day. That the one that knocked me out of the quaddy. This was yeah. the old houseman. He was a um, knocked you out of the quaddy, but um, I suppose the highlight was race speed profiles had it uh, right up there, second pick with Dr. Aki. So we had um, a huge result on that, and Darren also found it in the Sydney set for Pro Better Live. So um, 
Yeah, it was a it was a good race, wasn't it? Well, in the end, Dr. Aki got trapped, and it was sort of game over. Well, after he, he three hundred meters. Exactly. It was there was always going to be the query about him at the distance, right up in the way. Yeah, waves. and that was the thing because it was at the edge of its distance rain range. Sh uh, Shin wasn't. He didn't push all the way forward, probably to instructions because they wanted to nurse it a bit. But they that did doesn't really nurse work it. at Rose Hill, does it? Nah, sitting. He was gone after 400 Well, he's sitting three wide without cover on a hard pace. Yeah. It's all over. If they went slow, yeah, it's fine to be out there, but yeah. they didn't. He was out there. You really wanted him to see him get the cushy run that everyone thought he was going to get. But yeah. once again, you get wide gates from those shoot races. Sometimes you can get caught out there. Yeah. And that's what we saw. Already. Yeah, that was a... Race six was a good one for um, a lot of our sets with Houseman. Um, a couple of completely forgivable runs and had the nice draw up the inside and uh, you beauty did the job for us. Yeah, he's a horse. I did look at him and I kept coming to him. I bet up on him first up, so I was, I was quite dirty on myself and not trying <laughs> But he, he had that progression where he did improve third mm. up last time and he has followed that same pattern. And I think that's something you can see a fair bit in John O'Shea's horses. They do try and follow those same patterns. Yep. Um, that second last race, we had the winner being Shiraz. Shiraz, you also had a good win on Shiraz. Yeah, we had a good uh, good win on Shiraz and suggested a save on the second and third horses at odds. So a nice little Cornella trifecta for the yeah for the followers and uh, for the team. Shiraz, I hear, looked well in the yard and he'll sort of pick out another couple of races this time of year. He's suspect. Yeah, he's a, he's a funny kind of a horse because he doesn't. He's still quite lightly framed, he's quite tall, he's quite leggy. He has returned stronger this time in, but I, I've always found him to be a good first up horse. Where Tony goes to him from here, I'm not sure, but I'm, I'm assuming he will try and keep it fresh and space between his runs, but yeah, definitely a good run. Horse to follow out of the race, definitely casual choice. Yeah. Big, big Flew flashing home, light yeah. Yeah, coming home, but he was a horse that found, well, he had countless hard luck stories last week with a few, uh, ordinary rides and things that just didn't go his way but graded fat as a pig, hit the line exceedingly well and I think um, he's definitely got a win in store this pro. Okay, well that's good to know. Um, and the last race, <laughs> he's become a bit of a, a pain in the ass of Hunter's Hollywood Bounds. What did you, how did you assess, he's quite inconsistent horse isn't he, I find. I think he, it just comes down to the fact he's a dead set wet tracker. Yep. He's a he's a Wednesday class horse. It was a Wednesday class race. Considering Marin Ostro came out of Wednesday races, I guess you could say that pretty safely. Yeah, definitely. Well, one thing to point out: Blake Shin in the last race, he's just he's become the king of the last race. Just yeah. Seems to find that that right ride. I think he just throw him in the quarter. Yeah. <laughs> last leg, every leg. But yeah, it, it was a race that I'm I'm not overly interested in looking at moving forward. It was a low quality race. Art and Bi probably hit the line quite well for a horse that was racing below its distance range. Yep. He hit the line fine. There was good money to, to, to suggest it's, it's returned well. This prep, it could be the maybe the one to follow. It might find its right race up around 2,000 metre mark. Okay. Uh, before we go on to what's happening this week, um, look a brief look at what else we did over the weekend. And uh, there was a, a really good, strong meeting at Caulfield. Um, Look, the race speed profiles had a really good week there, a day there. We had um, Pilly's Wish, Radical, Charm Harmony, Miss Promiscuity, and the big one, the last race, Lord Durante, which uh, Darren yes. Potter also found pretty strongly, and um, it was tipped at $15 in Dow the morning. Dow did give it a good push on track and just added the little cherry to the cake for the yeah. end of the day for me. Yeah, so, oh good, yeah. Thanks to the same. race speed profiles there. That's, That's always nice when you're having a winning day and sometimes willing to cop that little extra tip. Yeah, exactly, and the, the way I think Caulfield sort of played, you wanted to be inside and up on speed, and um, obviously in the feature race, Lord of the Sky got trapped and sort of it was over straight away. And uh, yeah, to the, the credit of the race speed profile, I think it paid about 12 bucks, Miss Promiscuity, so good job there, boys. Yeah, it was, I think the boys did exceptionally well because it was a track, like looking at it, a track you'd hate to bet on just for the simple fact of how poorly the track played. I think mm. you had to be on pace, but you wanted to be off the fence, and there was just a running lane where you had to be, and it was yeah. the first there. And so the it other... did well to. Yeah, really get a good assessment of the track. And your boys, the uh, the Melbourne Phantom, uh, he absolutely had a, uh, a field day at Caulfield. The stats I've got here: 175% return, 
four winners tipped of the eight races, four seconds. He's tipped the Quaddy, which has paid seven and a half thousand, and the Jockey Challenge. I know it's. I can't. We can't reveal who he is, but all, <coughs> all we are saying that this guy is dominates Caulfield. I, I was looking for the lunch ticket for uh, employee <laughs> of the week, but he, he definitely made it. Uh, yeah, quite a, a hard little day to take that award. Yeah, and uh, look, just while we got uh, Warren uh, Warren Huntley with the Mountie Yard Mail, he had um, he had a good day generating 138 percent return. Uh, Glenn Pollitt in Sydney, four winners on top, so the Glenn start was flying with a 200 percent return. And yeah. uh, talked about snow bets, so Super Six, 188 percent return. Two winners and three seconds, and Fletch, the Fletch Files is in the profit uh, area again, so it's good to see. Good to see. It uh, just goes to show it was the first meeting where you got that vibe where yeah. everyone, like we've had that lull the last couple of weeks, and I know we've still got a few more weeks of it here with a bit of hit and miss, but we will start to see a couple of those better horses returning, and yep. so we keep in good close eye on the trials and seeing how they have returned but it was the first time where even I and you can tell by if you looked at my set I did bet up on the day yeah, as opposed to the last six weeks and it, hopefully we can get a few more of those meeting bigger size fields and mm. it just goes to show you could, we could feel it was on the up yeah like sometimes you can spec a you can spec a horse at $20 and not have much confidence on it but the fact that you had four units on um, hard to hold you know, Darren and the RSPs are betting up on the likes of Houseman at Big Odds. It shows patience. Yeah, well, I think <laughs> patience is required, and when it's there, go for it. Yeah, definitely. I think this time of year, one thing I am learning is you do need to be patient. Yeah. You do need to try and find those right horses. If, if you're doing a playing edge race, that's great, but you, you really want to try and pick your marks, play down in the majority of the races, and and bet up where you do think there is a bit of value and I think that's the key to surviving the, uh, the winter months. Exactly and um, look, speaking of the winter months we roll forward to another week. Uh, we got the Ramorny happening this week. Have you had a quick look there? I have. There was a horse that was I uh, believe scratched out of the house on the race. He's desperate for a dry track. Mm -hmm. Turbulent jet. I think the horse is absolutely flying. He's okay. Absolutely desperate for that dry track. I do want to have a look and see how that Grafton track plays because he's a horse that can get back, but there is good pace in the race. I haven't done it in depth yet, but yep. he's definitely won. He's around that ten dollar mark. Around right? ten bucks, okay. So those he's having one that a look. been in the, the yep. black book waiting for the dry track. Okay. And um look we it go. should be two I've had a quick look at those cards. The two strong cards there. We've got a real strong Canterbury card on Wednesday. There's a uh, young John, John Sargent horse that I've been keeping an eye on. It's um, definitely there. And there's a few of those two-year-olds. Mm. These midweek two-year-old races, the quality from the two-year-old races on the Saturday to the Wednesday, there's not much of a difference. Yeah. And yeah, you can find a couple of little hidden gems. I think so. This time of year. So it's... Um, it's Good week of racing. It looks a good week, and uh, the beauty. Back to Randwick. Yeah, back to Randwick, and we're sort of all the uh, all our experts are in good form and fired up. And once you've had a good win, you want to put a bit of extra hard work into your form. So that's only good for the week moving forward. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah. I think a few people were starting to you had been a bit tired, and yeah, a couple of people had breaks and have been away and come back and starting to freshen up and just slowly start to just build the momentum and find our winning way leading into the spring carnival. Okay, sounds good. Well that's our little uh, little review of the weekend's racing. As we said, a great weekend of results for all of us. Um, look, you've got the punishshow.com.au or puntershow.com.au and also one to follow.com.au to grab all the different sets. Yeah, Otherwise, um, grab, grab us on our social media, our, both our websites or our Twitter handles. We'll Feel have free info. to ask any questions. Yeah, any questions. We've got plenty of information people, yeah. all week. So, um, no, thanks for listening. And we'll do a uh, recap of the two trials this week. Right? Yeah, we've we'll got Warwick Farm Friday. So, yeah. I'll be at both of them and um, hopefully find a couple of wonderful follows. Exactly. So, Punish Show Wednesday and uh, Preview and Trial Show on Friday. Yes. Sounds good. See you guys. See you guys.